For the global assembly, we need the element connectivity information. Let's draw out a few elements of the grid and label the nodes. So here are a few elements with nodes at the middle. And so I'm going to number them just straight across from left to right. And these are the global node numbers. We need to identify a pattern that will help us to define the global node numbers that correspond to each element of the grid. So let me label this is element one. Here is element two and element three. So in this example, we have four elements. The pattern that I found most useful is that the middle node of each element is always equal to two times E. E one here, two, and so forth. And we can write the first node of each element is always relative to the to the second one. So if this is two times e, this is two times e minus one. And the third node is two times e plus one. So this is for element one. Element two uh, would repeat the same pattern that we have here for element one and same for element three and four. The last major change is to the plotting. Since MATLAB still will linearly interpolate between discrete values, we should plot our solution for EZ at more locations along the x-axis than just at the nodes of the grid. This way we'll see the shape of the quadratic interpolation between the nodes rather than just linear interpolation. I've posted some more code that you are welcome to use to help you plot the output of your code. Uh, and here is the first part of that code that I posted for you. First, here I set the number of times that we are going to plot EZ within each element. And I used a really long variable name here just to make the code easier to read. The distance between the plotted solutions for EZ is defined right here, delta x. And then we'll cycle through each element and each of the 10 points here, since this is set to 10, at which we'll be plotting EZ within each element. This defines the indices at which we're plotting all of the values, the x position at which we're plotting these values. Here's psi for transforming to the master element. And then we evaluate EZ. Now for this psi, this is from what we had earlier for the coordinate transformation, x minus x1 of the element over x2 for the element minus x1 for the element minus 1. And so the denominator here is also just LE. And then here we're just tacking on the very last node of the grid. Then we can plot the magnitude of EZ. And let's compare the result for this code using quadratic elements versus the code you wrote earlier having linear elements. To do this, run the linear FEM code first. Save and then save the output. And here I called the output for the EZ, the magnitude. I called it ezmaglinear.dat. You can call it whatever you like. So load in the result here. In This is in your quadratic code that you're going to have this segment of code. You're going to have this in the quadratic code. So you're going to load the previous result and plot them both together here at the end of your quadratic code. And the last part of the code that I provided helps to plot the phase. So do the same thing here, run the linear code first, save the output from there so that here in the quadratic code you can load it in and plot it and compare it to the result with the quadratic elements. So at this point, go ahead and incorporate this into your code or unless you write your own way of plotting out your results and run your code and see if the quadratic elements provide a better result than the linear elements.